Hello, it's Alina from Exmate Mastery here. Today we're going to talk about sketching a gable roof, which of course seems very simple, but with a little porch roof gable that sticks out, um, or actually just sits under the eave. I'm going to show you how to do that today in Sketch, and it seems like it's simple and easy thing to do, but if you don't know where to place the square break, then it can be kind of tricky. So let's take a look at how to create a porch roof sitting underneath the rake end of a gable here in Xactimate. So here I am, I'm already in an estimate, I'm in the sketch window as you can see, and this is the roof type I'm talking about. Sketching a gable end here and putting this other little tiny gable underneath the rake end there to make it as like a little porch roof where you could walk in in the entryway right there. So let's take a look at how to sketch that. I'm just going to go ahead and delete it off. And we're going to go ahead and see how you can see my room below. This is actually going to annoy me because I don't want the roof sticking to this room below. This is kind of a sandbox that I'm just playing with, and I don't want this having any bearing on the roof I'm creating. So I can go down here to Auto Below. It's not under View like you think it would be. It's under Auto Below here, and we just want to choose Roof. So that'll turn off that ghost image of the room below, so it won't mess with anything that I'm doing with the properties of my roof. So F for Roof is the shortcut we're going to use here in Sketch. It's going to load a gable to my cursor. That looks great. Gable style roof. Left click once to place. I'm going to go ahead and name this main gable. I always like to name as soon as I add so I don't forget to name them. And this main gable was 35 foot in length and let's say 22 foot in width there. So that's the main gable and that's good to go. Now I need to create a little porch roof right there. The easiest thing to do is just to grab another gable roof and slide it on in here. And I don't usually advocate putting roofs into roofs like this. I always say square break and that way you'll bring over the properties of the roof um, with it. But let me just show you what will happen if I take a roof. And this is the easiest way to do this. You just have to work backwards uh, to make sure everything wraps together. So if I grab another roof by using the roof tool or hitting F on my keyboard, it will load that roof to my cursor and I can place it there so that the roof walls, which is the inner square, those are your exterior walls on this ghost image roof here, and the outer dotted lines are my roof edge. So I've got some eave and rake space there that you're seeing. So the inner wall of my uh, roof attached to my cursor must meet up with the inner wall um, or the exterior wall, however you want to say that, the roof wall to have the, um, the roof I'm placing it on. So we kind of try to line up the roof walls and the roof edges, left click once to place. If we hit the three on our keyboard, you can see the 3D view and that'll give you that little porch roof. So the only problem with doing that though, however, if I go over to estimate items and look here on my roof area, or the plane of my roof here on my grouping tree, anything I add to my main gable will only go to the main gable. It will not roll out onto this new roof, which I should have named. I'm already getting ahead of myself here. We'll just call it porch. Okay, so those are two separate entities on your um, your estimate items screen. And then also in Sketch, if you were to graphically add shingles to this, it would only roll out on the main gable and would not be attached to the porch because the porch is not a subgroup of the main gable. So if we want to fix this, we can go to porch, highlight just porch only, and sometimes it helps to zoom in in order to grab that label name and, and click on it so that I'm not just on the main gable, I'm on the porch only. Okay, so if I go to the properties of that, the right hand, the little hand hovering over the piece of paper in the top right hand corner, you can see that the name is there. So I've got, I know that I don't have the main gable selected. And then I can make it a subgroup of the main gable. Now you see the part number, which means it's a part of something. And if we go back over to estimate items, they are now one main surface rather than being split up like that. And what caused the split was me going and grabbing another roof and adding it separately. So that's the easiest way to create this look. Absolutely. Uh, the way that I would prefer to uh, create new roofs is to use the square break tool. So most people can use a square break tool. 
If I just load uh, tap B on my my keyboard, I can load that to my cursor there. Left click once, and that's going to be your square break. So you can break roof planes, of course, with your square break tool. And I can left click, hold, and drag, and that will extend the slope the slope out. That's how most people use the square break tool. However, the square break tool can be used to create new roofs. So over here, I can go ahead and square break this plane right here. And you'll see the square break there. And if I add the control key to this, so before I even click the handle, I'm going to hold down the control key. Then I'm going to move my cursor over that blue handle, left click, hold, and drag. And that will create a separate gable extension. So in 3D you can see there, I've pulled it out slightly just to exaggerate and let you see what happened when I use that control key in conjunction with the uh, square break tool. And I can just pull that back into the roof itself, lining up the roof wall with the roof edge, and that will create that look of grabbing that other roof and setting it here. Now what's the advantage of that? Well, as you can see, there's a number one next to my roof name, and that means it's already a part of the main gable. Because I square broke this porch roof, and let me go ahead and name it, I'm going to get myself into trouble here. Um, I square broke this porch roof off of the main gable. It took on the characteristics of the main gable, so if you had changed the pitch, had different eave, um, you know, or rake depths, it would take all of that on so that when you create the new roof, you don't have to go into the properties and make it a part of and change the pitch and change all those measurements, right? It'll take on the characteristics of the main gable that you've broken it off of. So that's why I'm a big fan of using the square break tool rather than going and grabbing a new roof and setting it here because it saves you on a bunch of steps. Now, if you don't care and you're just trying to get this built, just um, know that you need to either make it a part of or roll out the shingles if you use that separate roof plane like I showed you here. Just remember those steps and you should be good to go. So that is how you create a little mini porch roof underneath the main gable of a home. Hope that was helpful. Hope you learned a couple little sketch tips here as I kind of put a lot of information into this video, I realized. So if you like these kinds of topics on Sketch, please be sure to like this video. And also, if you do me a favor, share with any other contractors that could use this information. That's like gold for us here on YouTube. So I'd appreciate that. Also subscribe if you wanna get our weekly tips. I try to make a video every week on Sketch, estimating, supplement topics, all kinds of fun things. So join me every Tuesday, uh, sometimes Wednesdays, for our topics here on Xactimate. My name is Alina Wilson and I train contractors how to use Xactimate and how to make their supplement lives easier. For more information on what I do, go to my website at www.xm8mastery.com. Hope you have a really great week in your business and are staying safe out there and I will see you next week.